Hi boys and girls, I'm Mrs. Moisson and I'm back here today with Tucker and we're reading you the story, The Monster Who Ate My Peas and it is one of my favorite books. It's about a boy who despises peas and he makes a deal with the monster to have him eat the peas for him. And the author of this book is Danny Schnitzland and the illustrator is Matt Faulkner and I hope you enjoy today's story. Eat your peas, said my mom, or you won't get dessert. I said, before peas, I would rather eat dirt. I know you don't want to, she said with a glare, but until they get eaten, you'll stay in your chair. I begged and I whined, I got down on my knees. Please, mommy, don't make me eat all those peas. I stomped and I grumbled, I yelled and I pled. Why can't I eat corn or potatoes instead? Eat up those peas, do it now, my mom said, or you'll get no ice cream and you'll go straight to bed. My mom left the kitchen, I poked at those peas. Their sickening smell made me weak in the knees. Quickly I offered the peas to my pup, but Ralph barely sniffed them, then turned his nose up. I closed my eyes tightly and whispered a wish. Please let those peas disappear from my dish. And something quite strange and mysterious occurred, almost as if somebody, somewhere, had heard. For right out of nowhere, a monster appeared. His hair looked like spinach, and so did his beard. His barely blowed body was broccoli green, and his breath, when he sneered, reeked of rotten sardines. Each eyeball resembled a big Brussels sprout. His long, bumpy squash nose was sticking straight out. Large liver-like lips peeled back to reveal sharp teeth like a shark's and a tongue like an eel. Long octopus tentacles withered from his torso. Quite gruesome already, those arms made him more so. His ears were like mushrooms, his chin like a beet, and he balanced himself on two big stinky feet. Just how he got in, I hadn't a clue. My heart skipped a beat as I asked, Hey, who are you? He growled, I'm the monster who helps kids like you. I eat up eggplant, I eat turnips too. I gobble down foods that make st small stomachs quiver, like lima beans, collard greens, spinach, and liver. I came in reply to your pitiful plea, and I'm ready and willing to eat every pea. I'll eat up the big ones, I'll eat up the small. But then you must give me your new soccer ball. I thought of my soccer ball under my bed. I once bounced it 23 times on my head. But then when I looked at the peas on my plate, my brain filled with dread and disgust and with hate. What is your answer? The monster demanded. I don't have much time, so I'll be very candid. Millions of kids want their yucky food eaten, from Bali to Raleigh, from Chile to Sweden. Okay, I said finally, I'll give you my ball. Eat up my peas, eat them up one and all. He laughed a cold laugh as he picked up each pea and swallowed them down 
individually. All 64 peas, slimy, gruesome, and green. He ate every one and licked the plate clean. And after he'd licked and he locked and he slurped, he set down my plate and boorishly burped. Then just as my mother came back in the room, he vanished, no trace, with a noise that went foom. Mom looked at my plate and she shouted with glee, you did it, you ate each and every pea. She gave me a hug and my ice cream so yummy, with chocolate on top, so good in my tummy. Then I went on upstairs and peeked under my bed. I started to sweat, my heart filled with dread, for there in the spot where my ball used to be, there was only one small, squishy, green pea. And now when I want to play soccer with Dad, I think of that ball, and I get very sad. I've, if I've said it one time, then I've said it ten. I won't make a trade with a monster again. Not long after that, we had peas with our meal. The monster appeared with the same kind of deal. I'll eat up your peas just as quick as you like, but then in return you must give me your bike. I thought of my bicycle, shiny and new. I spent my whole savings to buy it, that's true. But when I looked down at those gloppy green peas, I felt like you feel when you get a disease. Okay, I said sadly, I'll give you my bike. Just eat up those peas Get them out of my sight. The monster then opened his mouth very wide. He took all my peas and dumped them inside. He chewed and he chomped and he swallowed them down. Then, boom, he was gone off for some other town. My mom served me cake, but I just couldn't eat it. I walked to the door feeling down and defeated. I twisted the knob and I shuffled outside to get on my bike and go for a ride. I looked all around and I started to cry. My bike wasn't out there and I think you know why. And right in the space where my bike used to be, there was only one very small mushy green pea. Now when my friends take their bikes for a ride, they never ask me, so I stay home inside. If I've said it one time, then I've said it ten. I won't make a trade with a monster again. A week after that, there were peas in the stew. The monster showed up like he always would do. The words that he said made my whole body freeze. Give me your puppy and I'll eat your peas. I looked down at Ralph and he gazed up at me. I looked at my plate and each ghastly green pea. Come on, growled the monster. I'm already late. Just give me your dog and I'll finish your plate. I looked at those peas and I just about gagged. I looked back at Ralph, his scruffy tail wagged. My pup put his cold little nose on my knee. I reached for my fork and I speared a small pea. I opened my mouth and I squinched up my eyes. The pea touched my tongue, and I got a surprise. 
That pea didn't taste like I thought it that it would. I had to admit that pea tasted good. I picked up another and chewed it and swallowed. Each pea tasted better than those it had followed. I ate every pea till there wasn't a trace, and Ralph thanked me kindly by licking my face. I turned to the monster, that grumpy old guy, to say, I don't need you, and tell him goodbye. But right in the spot where the monster had stood was only a pea, and it tasted quite good. And now there's not one single food I won't try. If others can eat it, well, then so can I. I'm happier now than I ever have been, and I never will trade with a monster again. Well, boys and girls, thank you for joining us in the reading of The Monster Who Ate My Peas. I know that Tucker enjoyed the story as much as I did, and I hope you did also, and I will see you back real soon. Bye-bye.